Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, please subscribe. I'd really love that. If you're returning, how you doing? What we're going to be talking about right now is what people are seeing and experiencing in everyday life when it comes to being of the prepared mind. I get sent pictures, videos, emails, and links. And if there is anything that you would like to send me for a video, my email is in the description box below. <clears throat> So this first email comes in from a community member and she said, I was out and about the other day doing my errands like I do every month. There are $100 bills being funny money. Uh, a bill went through the machine and the machine went through as real, but it was fake. Really? Glad they sent it back. I stuck to smaller bills this time around. Hope you're doing good and the animals too. Love the office preps. Thank you. Well, we're doing good. We are. Thank you. I hope you're doing all right. So, so the ATM machine or the machine like the, at the cash register. Wow. Okay. So this article was sent in by a community member and it has to do with education. And if you have kids or grandkids, your nieces, your nephews in school, you might want to pay attention. Okay. So a seventh grader last year um, went viral for claiming that kids in his class were way behind and had fourth grade skills. A few days ago, a now deleted Reddit user who went onto the platform by the nickname of Dragon Fruit Bright 810 brought back attention to this topic by listing all the areas in which their 15 to 18 year olds are slacking. This is what they posted online. The public needs to know the ugly truth. Students are significantly behind. There was a teacher who went viral on TikTok when he stated that his 12 to 13 year old students do not know their shapes. It's horrifying, but it does not surprise me. Their shapes, they learn that in pre-K and kindergarten. What do you mean they don't know their shapes? He said, I teach high school, age range 15 to 18 years old. I have students who can't do the following. Read at grade level. Some come into my classroom at a third to fourth grade reading level. There are some students who cannot sound out words. Write a complete sentence. They don't capitalize the first letter of a sentence or their eyes. Oh, they don't capitalize the eyes. Okay. They also don't add punctuation. Well, I, sometimes I don't either, but it's only because like when I'm just writing something really quick, but that's just me. Um, I have a student write one whole page essay without a period. Spell simple words. Add or subtract double digits. For example, they can't sell, solve 12 minus 13 in their head. They also cannot do it on paper. They need a calculator. Know their multiplication, multiplication tables. Round, graph, understand the concept of negative, understand percentages. Well, you know what's funny? I'll never forget. Oh my gosh, what was it in like sixth grade or something like that? Um, a math teacher had said, you know, there's going to come a time when everybody's just going to have a calculator and you're not going to be able to do things in your head, like do math in your head. And wow, was she correct? Yeah. Um, the next thing is solve one step variable equations. For example, if I tell them two X equals eight, solve the four X, they can't solve it. They would subtract, uh, by two on both sides instead of dividing by two. They can't take notes. Follow an example. They have a hard time transferring the patterns that they see in an example to a new problem. No research skills. The phrases that they use to Google are too vague when they search for information. For example, if I ask them to research the five types of chemical reactions, they only type in reactions in Google. When I explain that Google cannot read minds and they have to be very specific with their wording, they just stare at me confused. But even if their search phrases are good, they do not click on the links. They just read the excerpt that Google provides for them. If the answer is not in the excerpts, they give up. Just because they know how to use their phones does not mean that they know how to use a computer. This is so true. This is very, very true. Uh, they are not familiar with common keyboards shortcuts. They also cannot type properly. Some students 
type using their index fingers. Well, I do that sometimes. Um, these are just some things I can name at the top of my head. I'm sure there are a few that I missed here. Now, as a teacher, I try my best to fill in the gaps, but I want the general public to understand that when the gap list is this big, it is nearly impossible to teach my curriculum efficiently. This is part of the reason why teachers are quitting in droves. Oh, it actually goes a lot deeper than that. Yeah. You ask teachers to do the impossible and then vilify them for not achieving it. You cannot expect us to teach our curriculum efficiently when students are grade levels behind. Without a good foundation, students cannot learn more complex concepts. I thought this was common sense, but I guess it is not based on admin's expectations and school policies. I want to add that there are high performing students out there. However, from my experience, the gap between the gifted and honors population and the general population has widened significantly. Either you have students that perform exceptionally well, or you have students coming into class grade levels behind. There are rarely students who are in between. Are there other teachers in the same boat? Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I, you know, because of my grandchildren and everything, you know, you know, I'm very involved with my, my granddaughter and my grandson and my niece and my nephew and stuff like that. I'm very involved with their, you know, their curriculum and their education and stuff like that. And wow, yeah, I can definitely tell you what's going on. Um, <laughs> um, my nephew, he's special needs, okay? He has something called Williams Syndrome. And he he's going to be 10 in October. And he has uh, like uh, speech impairment, things like that, okay? And he still has trouble like with forming sentences and things like that but that's because of his williams syndrome and it's not something that he can help okay and dominic has he he gets bullied a lot you know things like that so we you know he goes to speech therapy and things but you know when we're at home you know and we're working with him and things like that he gets very frustrated you know and when I speak to his teachers, they're like, well, Dominic gets frustrated. So we have to just, you know, deal with him on like on another basis. And I'm like, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, stop right there. Okay. He gets frustrated because he doesn't understand and he doesn't understand because it's not being explained to him on a level that he can understand. You can't throw terms at him. Okay. You have to speak to him on his level. See, he doesn't have a normal 10-year-old brain, okay? He doesn't. And so, you know, and then even like with my grandchildren, okay? Like, it, well, let me start with this. My niece, Cariana, she's 14, okay? This child is literally on genius level, okay? She doesn't even have to crack open a book and she's on honor roll, okay? Now, with my, my grandchildren, with Mia and Giovanni, Giovanni is literally the same as Cariana. Doesn't even have to crack a book. Honor roll. Okay. Mia, she is, she's special needs because she's high functioning autistic. Okay. So she's in the special classes as well, but she gets, she gets frustrated too. And she doesn't understand. And, and she thinks that the teachers hate her and no Mia, it's not that, you know, it's just, it takes a special kind of person to be a teacher, especially in today's society where kids are literally being babysat by devices. They don't understand why it is so important to have an education first and devices last. But when they're in homes where the parents could care less, okay, because let's be honest, and they could care less and they don't want to deal and here's the phone go do what you want to do okay and the only time these kids actually get paid attention to or they are forced to uh, do their work their schoolwork their homework or whatever is when they're in school okay so believe me when i tell you i know all about the education system okay i've been dealing with it for quite some time and no it's not fun okay especially when you have special needs kids okay and I know that a lot of you can attest to it.
okay because you have you know kids that are on the spectrum and stuff like that so believe me i get it you know it's it's not easy and you know it it, it it's very difficult. It's very difficult. And it's not something that a lot of people can handle. I'll just say that. It's not something that a lot of people can handle. Yeah. So, and it's unfortunate because a lot of people, this they'll see an autistic kid and they're like, oh, God, yeah, no. and it's not because they're hyperactive or they're, you know, sugar rush or anything like that. That is just, that is just their way. It is just their way and mom and dad know how to handle it and grandmom and grandpa know how to handle it and sometimes the teachers know how to handle it but not all the time so this was brought to my attention by a community member um she said have you seen this florida bill um it was passed banning homeless people from sleeping in public and yes i have so I'm going to explain to you exactly what's going on, okay? The Florida House on Friday, they approved a controversial proposal that would prevent homeless people from sleeping in public despite concerns about increased costs uh, for local governments. Uh, local governments meaning counties, townships, whatever the case may be, okay? However you want to uh, refer to them as. The uh, House, okay, voted 82-26, um, to pass the bill HB 1365, which is backed by DeSantis. It also would make it easier for residents and business owners to challenge local officials over how homelessness is addressed. The Senate is scheduled to take up a similar proposal, SB 1530, uh, on Monday, today. So House sponsor Sam Garrison acknowledged the, mem mem the measure <laughs> uh, he said it isn't going to eliminate homelessness. And he's right. He said um, current efforts are not working. And he's correct. It's not going to address anything. Okay. It's really not. Um, if you were to come to the Tampa Bay area, okay, just about wherever there is a tree lot, a wooded area, whatever you want to call it, there is a tent city in there. Okay. Um, and it's not like we have benches everywhere, okay? We don't have, um, like, uh, bus stops with benches and stuff like that. So you're not going to see, like, a homeless person sleeping on a bench, okay? It's not like that. Wherever you see a wooded area, there is a tent city in there, okay? This is not a bill that is designed to put people out of sight, out of mind. It's actually quite the opposite, okay? He said that the goal is to keep Florida cities from becoming more like San Francisco, where the problem exceeds the resources to address it. And the bill would prevent cities and counties from allowing people to sleep on public property. So, like in a parking lot, I guess. Um, or, you know, like, and this includes like buildings, right of ways. It would allow local governments to designate certain property for sleeping or camping if the sites meet standards set by the Florida Department of Children and Families. Now, such areas could only be used for one year, would have to include access to things like restrooms and running water, have security be deemed alcohol and drug free. Also, the site's could not harm values of nearby properties for safety. Well, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Because that's just not how Florida is uh, designed, if you will. Okay. But without state funding to carry out this bill, it has been contended that it would increase local government costs and force homeless people into wooded areas, which it has already happened. And it's been happening like this for years. So, Representative LaVon Bracey Davis from Ocoee County, and Ocoee is O-C-O-E-E, -E, said that the measure seeks to criminalize homelessness while bullying municipalities and counties into doing what we want them to do. We must acknowledge that pushing the unhoused out of sight is not a solution. It is a failed attempt to sweep a societal problem under the rug. Once again, correct. So Anna 
Escamani from Orlando said that lawmakers should focus on a robust investment in transitional housing and shelters. But no, instead, we want to design a location that's probably going to be really hard to identify. Once again, correct. Here, I know, okay, now I only really know about this, the Tampa Bay area, okay, because I used to work with the homeless community here in the Tampa Bay area. Here in the Tampa Bay area, there's maybe in each county, one homeless shelter, and it's designed only for men. And there's maybe 20 to 30 beds. There is nothing, nothing for women and children. The only thing for women and children are domestic violence shelters. Okay. Um, so, you know, that's why there are so many tent cities around the Tampa Bay area. And is it concerning? Yes, of course it is. Is there, you know, bathroom facilities and water facilities and this facility, that facility is there security? No, of course not. Of course not. This bill, uh, they said, would also give residents and businesses uh, owners standing to file civil lawsuits against local governments for allowing illegal sleeping or camping on public property. Well, first of all, what this and this is my opinion, okay, what this is actually going to cause is more squatting, okay, more burglaries, okay, because they are trying to run there. You cannot help the unhoused, okay, because a lot of them, okay, and this is coming from someone who knows the real estate in this state, in, in the Tampa Bay area, it is virtually impossible to rent around here. If you wanted to rent a, a house, okay, one of the things that is required is that you make three times the amount of the rent every single month. So say the rent is $3,000 a month. It is required that you make at least $9,000 a month. Please tell me who makes $9,000 a month. I'll wait. Nobody, nobody. My husband doesn't even make that kind of money and he works for Homeland Security, okay? My son, who is, uh, he, you know, him and uh, Jesse just got a, uh, an apartment, but they're in uh, like an uh, income-based uh, place uh, that's closer to his work. And he, they pay $1,400 a month and he had to do first license security and stuff like that but it was income based okay because he he makes decent money not great money but decent money and he was able to qualify but he was able to qualify because he's married and they've got two kids and one on the way if he didn't have all that they would have said you make too much bye bye and they would still be living at home so you know there's a lot of things that factor into play here Okay, and with the rising amounts of rent that is unacceptable, in my opinion, that is why it, it, there are so many homeless people. And if you remember uh, back, what was it, two, three years ago, landlords were literally, when the, when the housing bubble was so large, landlords were literally selling their properties out from underneath their tenants and the new owners of the home were giving the, the tenants like 48 hours to get the hell out. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to come up with first list and security and find a rental within 48 hours? You can't, it's impossible. So now those people are now homeless and now they can't get back up on their feet. And talk about resources. You know what? It, how long it takes to get on the lid, the list for HUD? Three to five years here in in the, in the Tampa Bay area. So you know this this is this is ridiculous. Okay, and if if DeSantis really wants to help the homeless, start building uh, communities of tiny homes. Okay, if you really want to help, start building uh, more homeless shelters. Do something that's really going to help. Okay, do something. Stop running your mouth and do something. You wanted to make Disney pay taxes? Well, now use those tax dollars and put it to some good. Okay, enough friggin' said. Okay, so here's something that was sent in. 
uh, saying, wow, the global elite, global elites really want their WW, meaning the world war. Uh, after all, it's not their kids that, that they are sending off. Do you really, do you remember when they said 45 would do this? German forces were also caught on audio discussing destroying bridges leading to Crimea. Rus Russia released the audio and Germany confirmed it's real. They really, really want a WW. 45 Junior tweeted out, are you paying attention? Damn. So another celebrity uh, is building a fortified compound. You know who RuPaul is? They revealed that he is building a fortified compound in the state of, of Wyoming, saying we are moments away from an effing civil war. I'm fearing the absolute worst. We are moments away from an effing civil war. All the signs are there. The compound is reportedly being constructed on a 60,000 acre ranch in Wyoming. 60,000 acres. Damn. I wouldn't call it a bunker, he said but it is designed to withstand calamity. It's a lot of concrete and a lot of things. Interesting. And before I go, here's another Florida man thing. <laughs> uh, the Florida House passed legislation on Friday to lower the boomstick purchase from ages 21 down to 18. Well, you know what? The way I look at it, if they can... If they can defend our country at the age of 18, they should be able to own one at the age of 18. The NRA ILA reported that the bill HB 1223 passed the House by a vote of 7635. It was legal to buy a long boomstick in Florida at the age of 18 until shortly after February 14, 2018, with Parkland tragedy. Uh, the legislature raised the minimum purchase to age 21 following that event. The NRA filed suit against Florida's increased legal purchase age, arguing that it violated the rights of 18 to 20 year olds. HB 1223 is designed to return the legal purchase to age 18. State Representative Robin Bartleman criticized the passage of HB 1223, saying, shame on us. We told the citizens of Florida that we were going to protect them. Okay, we are protect in the right hands. We are protecting ourselves. Shame on you for not allowing us to. Not everybody is a bad guy. All right, sorry, Bottleman. Not everybody's a bad guy. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Okay, I will see you in the next one. You stay safe. You stay positive. You keep prepping, and as always, fearless. Ciao.